Oofta, what you got there then, eh? Looks like an acid flow, don't you know? That's right, that's my natural Minnesotan accent, which I struggle to contain every day. But let's look at the code, shall we? Okay, so isochronous transfer descriptors. We can see that is acid, and it's going to go down and taint all sorts of other stuff. These flags are acid, so you get to control the starting frame. Get to control the frame count. And you just keep going down. This is fun because I was trying to find the definition of that, and it's literally not defined anywhere. I'm hoping that that's just like defined at compilation time and it's just like automatically created or something like that, but I can't find the definition anywhere. That's neither here nor there though, because we work our way down through the code and ultimately what we're gonna see is that these acid values start being used for things like calculating start offsets. So basically the relative frame number, which was acid, they get to pick which of those offset values, which were, uh, there's eight of them in there, 16 bit values. They get to pick which one they want. And so they get to pick the start offset and the next offset. Then there's some sanity checks here, and that's fine. Those are easily bypassable. Some more sanity checks right here. But then down here, they finally start calculating the start address and the end address. Uh, right there, end address. So start address is going to be this BP field. So that's the buffer page zero or BE, the buffer end. So basically, depending on whether or not this is true, it's either going to start from this beginning or the end. So either way, this is an acid value. The attacker fully controls this and they fully control the start offset that's being added to it. So fully controlled acid and same thing going on down here with the end offsets and the end addresses. So fully controlled values there. And then ultimately what we see is a length being calculated and it seems to be coming from acid values. Indeed, that is acid math and that's as bad as an acid bath. So we've got end address which attacker controls plus some constant or let's just consider this simpler one right here end address minus start address well that means there's an opportunity to do an integer underflow of course you don't necessarily need to since these are fully controlled you could just you know create some really large values anyways but you can integer underflow if for whatever reason you feel like it and you get a really large length that length field is ultimately used down here in this thing called OHCI copy ISO TD. And so we can see it takes a start address, which is acid, end address, which is acid, length, which is acid, and it's copying in from something called USB buff. We go to the definition of that, we see it's a hard coded buffer of 8,000 bytes and it's in this OHCI thing. And so, you know, we don't necessarily know where this OHCI thing is coming from. You could go and do all of the searching around, but all we need to care about is there's a big old buffer, but there's a much bigger length opportunity because it's fully attacker controlled. So this is the core overread. An attacker can easily, even without doing an integer underflow, they can easily create a length that is greater than 8,192 bytes, and they will overread from this USB buffer. And this is being sent in a direction to the device, meaning into the guest OS, which means anything above and beyond the end of this buffer is all leaked information being sent back into the VM that it can potentially use to set up further exploits against QMU. So what was the fix for that? Well, sanity checks, of course, right? So first a sanity check to make sure that start address is not greater than end address, so you can't have some sort of integer underflow. And then a second sanity check to say, well, if they still calculate a length that's too big for that USB buffer that they're copying from, just set the length to the maximum size of the USB buffer. Don't give them anything above and beyond that. So those are both good sanity checks. Stop the integer over underflows and stop the overcopies. So just a quick note here, I found this bug when I was searching for stack-based buffer overreads. I wanted to give you, you know, one example of everything. But when I went in and looked at this, clearly I had seen this is not a stack-based overread, or at least I don't think that that entry from the OHCI information is allocated on the stack. I can't tell for sure. Can't even really tell for sure whether it's on the heap or whether it's a global. But uh, ultimately, it's definitely not an overread from the stack, and therefore I was quite upset with the CVE entry. But at this point, I had spent so much time just trying to find the stack-based overread that I had no choice but to write it up for you anyways.